There's a massive tornado alert. In Japan, at least two people have died and several others are missing. Someone's over there in their tents. It's gone. Their shelter's gone. As officials warn of the heaviest rain ever. We spent the last few years attempting to drive our UK van all the way around the world. And after crossing 19 countries, we've had our fair share of extreme weather, like the tornado warning we got in Texas. So in case of a major hail, we've spotted these shelters here. The hailstorm in Turkey. And minus 12 in Yellowstone. I think that is the first time in my life I've ever seen anybody scrape in the inside. But we didn't expect to get that kind of weather here in Japan. Love, it's 38.1 degrees in this van. It feels like it. Life is like Mother Nature, unpredictable. There's cloudy days and there's sunny days, but you have the power to decide the weather of your life. Artyom Gross. Yes, we slept in a little roadside station, which is absolutely rammed now. Today we're gonna go and uh, head to a beach. Uh, it's probably about three hours drive uh, further south in Japan, but we figured we needed a little bit of nature for the weekend. Okay. A convenient spot, but not a very pretty one. <laughs> Looking very grey this morning. It may not be the best weekend to go to the beach, but uh, at least it will be quieter and there'll be a breeze. One thing we have found that uh, parking in towns, there's no air, there's no wind blowing. All the buildings give you protection. And when it was, it dropped to 30, uh, it was 29 in the van overnight, which is which is no joke when you haven't got air con. And the humidity as well, but I think that's what's killing me as well. Check out this neighborhood, these houses and these gardens. I know we say it every video, but honestly, it's just literally everywhere. All of that is bamboo. Bamboo forests everywhere in Japan. Okay. First toll road. We have to do a toll road on this one, so we got the uh, we got the ticket here. <laughs> now that's what I call a bridge. This is a massive bridge, and it's super windy today. In fact, the top of that bridge there is actually in the clouds. We have a track record with bridges and clouds. Do you remember San Francisco? Look at that. Golden Gate Bridge. there's a person there I think the ETC one I think is if you have like a special thing in your win in your window Five. 30 quid <laughs> That's why we don't take toll roads. <laughs> Arigato, Kazumash. <laughs> so now 
we're just going to try and find a, a beach park up. We found online, um, on iOverlander, a free campsite next to a beach. So uh, that's looking hopeful, although it was about four years ago that it was put on there, so you never know. Fingers crossed, keep <laughs> everything crossed. <laughs> Oh, there's a monkey warning sign there <laughs> and uh, this whole coastline they've got loads of fishing boats fish markets there's obviously uh, a massive fishing trade on this coast as well all the nets lined up by the side of the road Sign saying Tanora Beach. In 200 meters, your destination will be on the right. Oh my goodness, it feels like we're coming into the jungle. I feel like we're going into Cornwall. I can see the sea through the trees. Oh, nice. It's whether or not we're allowed to park down here, that's the question. Your destination is on the right. Wow, look at that. Yeah, and there's fans oh, there. There's tents and everything. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy. Look at that. <laughs> This is like the free one we stayed by the lake. Yay! Yay! Yeah, that's nice. For the beach, a couple of people swimming, tents on the beach. Yeah, I think this will do for a couple of nights. Oh, it's jellyfish. A lot of jellyfish. One there. And there. There's a couple there. Yeah, they're going to eat us. <laughs> yeah. So we just asked the guys behind us. And we're like, jellyfish. They're going, hi, jellyfish. And we were going, ah. And they were going, yeah. We were going, good or bad? And they're going, no, bad. bad. Oh, okay. Okay. So Shall there's we? no swim. We've got a nice beach, but there's no swimming. There you go. So we're not cooling off in the sea. Cold showers. But there is a shower, outside shower, just there. We've got our Mexican blanket out. We have our Turkish picnic rug and our Mexican blanket. Oh, that's perfect. In fact, the last time we sat on this was with Ben and Cheska, Nate and Kim, on a beach in Barcelona, oh, Mexico. Thinking of, of you guys. One of our favorite moments. It was. I don't know whether you can hear the bug noises, but they're there. <laughs> the jungle is just there. We've got the mosquito coil going. These are absolutely amazing. When I lived in Singapore, I used to always like these and they worked really, really good. So we picked some up today. Anyway, my sweetness, cheers. Come by. Come by. We've heard back from Kazooie, our Japanese shipping agent, who's been in touch with the shipping company, the ferry company that goes to Korea. She said she can't book the boat for us because we need proof of an onward journey. Pretty common in some countries, you have to have onward flights. But it's not just flights. We need proof that Trudy is leaving Korea as well, not just us. But if we book a ship to China and we can't get the visa, Potentially, we lose hundreds, if not maybe a thousand pounds. So we've contacted the Korean agent and asked them to see if they can book the Chinese boat um, provisionally. So if we can cancel it and not lose our money, it's, it's a good option. But if we can't book it and cancel it, then we've told them that just go ahead and see if you can book a ship to Vietnam.
Good morning. Oh, it's another cracking hot day today. Look at this for a view. We are still parked up on this lovely beach here. In fact, we've actually been parked up here for nearly a week. Actually, it is a week. Um, and the reason we stayed here so long was because we woke up one morning and thought we'd check the weather forecast and saw this. I'm just on the computer looking at the weather forecast and there's a massive tornado alert nine minutes ago in this area here and we're part here so we're in it what do you do then it's in japanese but the people over there are intense it's a little stormy but i can't see that we're gonna have a tornado kagawa prefecture has weather conditions that are prone to violent gusts such as tornadoes notice how the sky looks if there are signs of approaching cumulonimbus clouds such as thunder or sudden changes in wind Please take precautions, move into a sturdy building and watch out for lightning, hail and heavy rain. I think we'll bring you the Starlink in. Joking. I think we better bring the Starlink in. We'll put the rubber mats and the carpet on the roof to protect the... Only if it only if it looks like it's only gonna... if it looks like it's going to happen. But I think we should have a plan, shouldn't we? Look, close this window. Yeah. It doesn't actually look. I mean, it's raining, but it doesn't look too stormy at the moment. There's two other. There's a guy in a tent there, and there's one other car there. But if not, we can always go into the toilet block if something happened. I just saw that by pure coincidence because. I was just looking at the weather forecast. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Are you not worried? No. Well, I don't know what all that tornado warning was about because the sun is trying to come out now and it's all gone really nice. So we've got the solar panel out again. Wake up to a morning panic, turn the computer on to see a tornado warning and then we've got lovely blue skies. It doesn't make any sense. Maybe Japanese like British weathermen. I don't know if you remember, there's a certain weatherman in England that we still laugh about. <laughs> Maybe. That's the last thing I expected to see, a tornado warning. But it wasn't long after when the sky started going a little bit grey. Okay, the sun didn't last. The sky has gone very black. I think we might need to put the solar away. <laughs> And the, and the awning. Over there, it's really bright. It's like misty, but bright. And then if you turn over there, it's dark. It feels... Ominous. It does. It does feel ominous. It's gone, the, the wind's dropped and it, the temperature's dropped. It feels cooler. That's gonna rain like anything, that is. Maybe this is the okay. tornado warning. Hold on. God, you can I feel can the feel wind. It. I can feel it. <laughs> Close the door. Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's really Oh my goodness, the wind is just battering us now. That's coming from nowhere. Tropical storm! Look out the back! That's proper rain, that is. Jeez. Holy schmoly. It 
feels like we're driving. It, it really does. It feels like it's supposed Yeah, this is crazy. So because the rain's driving from the side, it's actually coming through the door sill. So we're having to <laughs> clip a towel up. Let's clip that in there. Because it's all absolutely soaking. Trudy's leaking. Oh yeah, it's coming in there as well. I haven't had a chance to uh, to reseal this yet. That's tomorrow's job. Yeah, the guys over there in their tents, it's gone. Their shelter's gone. Oh, the tent's gone. Yeah, it's gone. That that cream coloured thing used to be a shelter, and it's now gone. This is the worst storm we've had. This is mad. love it's 38.1 degrees in this van it feels like it with the dry weather i took advantage to reseal around the leaking roof hatch one thing i do know it will dry quickly today and those temperatures are one thing when you're staying in accommodation with air conditioning or you've got long cold showers but no <laughs> here it's actually a real struggle in the van and uh, something that's going to possibly cause us a few problems as we travel. In fact, the weather in this region of Japan actually broke records. In Japan, at least two people have died and several others are missing. As after heavy rain pounded the country's southwest, at least eight rivers have overflowed. Dozens of mudslides have been reported. Hundreds of thousands in the region have been forced to evacuate, as officials warn of the heaviest rain ever. They also had terrible, terrible record-breaking storms in South Korea. The army there has been called in to help rescue efforts after deadly floods and landslides were triggered by torrential rain. At least 24 people have died and 10 others are missing. So we decided to wait it off here and not venture into those storms. We get enough drama in our life without going to look for crazy weather like that. We've been staying at this uh, campground. It is a campground with a toilet block. We found a couple of uh, free campgrounds uh, in Japan. This one is on Google Maps as a campground, but it's 100% free. And it's, they've even got nice toilets and uh, a toilet block and an outside shower. Um, so yeah, so that's all great. But listen, can you hear the noise of the jungle? If there's any doubt that we're in the tropics, that is it. There's this huge vine that's taken over the trees here. It's just grown all over them. Absolutely massive. I'm not sure what that is. So this morning we're up bright and early to make the best of the cooler weather um, at six o'clock in the morning, because today we're heading further south towards the south the weather forecast is looking okay at the moment uh, more hot 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 weather the only problem with living in the van and not moving for a while is that it does get a little bit messy <laughs> so yes it does <laughs> so, and this is tidy we've actually tidied a little bit yesterday so yeah we've been sleeping we've literally got a fan here a fan here a fan oh, here one above me a fan there a fan, a fan there. there and a spare one there and, and that makes all the difference without those fans we would be in trouble because we're close to a very quiet toilet block i'm going to top up with water before we leave sometimes it's not so easy in the mishies they tend not to have tabs um, but also sometimes the uh, the sinks are on those timers and it's really hard to fill up these bags.
It's a very low 32.4. That's not so bad, 68% humidity. Yeah. <laughs> I think we better get to these uh, Japanese gardens before it gets too hot. So we've closed all of the blinds in the van. And they've all got this reflective covering on the outside to try and keep the heat out. Right, I think it's time to uh, hit the road and get that aircon on. We're now heading to um, a nearby garden, which is one of the best Japanese gardens apparently here in Japan. Um, and it's on our route on the way down south. So we're gonna go and have a quick walk around there before it gets too hot. And if the sound is bad, it's because the air con is on. Yay! <laughs> We're all working in the uh, gardens before it gets too hot this morning. It's always good to follow what the locals do. <laughs> There's even paddy fields look dotted in between the houses in the town. Oh, it's a motorhome. That's a big one for over here. There's this lovely little shrine there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And the noises. <laughs> Everything in Japan tends to open about 9, 10 o'clock. So it's very quiet at the moment, apart from the bugs. The noise is mad, isn't it? <laughs> How loud is that? We uh, we just pulled into the supermarket car park. Marianne's just dropping some bottles off. But as we've been driving around Japan, I've noticed these little buildings with a strange sort of metal contraption in. And I keep meaning to stop and look at what it is, but I've just seen one next to the uh, next to the supermarket. What is that? Okay, I still don't know what that is. All right, I'm bringing Marianne to see if she can figure out what the machine is. Because she asked me and I'm like, I haven't got a clue. Oh, you can go in. I didn't come in. Yeah, it's for weighing produce. And it is for weighing rice. It's for weighing rice. rice? There's a picture there of rice sack. And you tip your rice in there. And then you get paid, it do you? you. And, and then you then, get paid. Yeah, you... 10 kilo is 100 yen. yen. I think that you bring your bag actually and you buy 100 yen. Oh, do you buy the rice? I think you buy the rice because the machine says put the money in there. We continued looking at the machine and still couldn't decide if it was for buying or selling rice. Maybe it's both. So that's pretty unusual. But if you know what it is, for sure, not just Let's guessing know. or flagging it like us. Let us know. I just love these stacked garages. Look, all these cars piled up. You wonder how they get them up there. It's <laughs> an unusual number plate. Number three. <laughs> that's easy to remember, isn't it? 500 yen. Beautiful. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yeah. You good driver! <laughs> just open the roof to let the heat out. And then we're just putting the reflective windscreen shield in to protect the heat pan from the sun. And also it protects the reversing camera because it gets so hot on the window. It does make a massive difference. So we just got some texts from the uh, Korean agent to say that they need all the dimensions and a photograph of Trudy and our paperwork so he can book the ferry to China. So it sounds like he might be able to book it with free cancellation. 
because we've told him to only book it if it's free cancellation. So fingers crossed. So we're just going to email him before we start walking around the park. Wow. Even the gates look impressive. Look at the size of those gates. Look at the view. Amazing. There was one thing we haven't really done since we've been in Japan and that's gone to a really good Japanese garden. And this place looks absolutely beautiful online. So uh, here we are. <laughs> okay, so here's the map. We've come in the, uh, the entrance here. We are there now. We're going to walk around, go across the top here, do a big loop, come back over this bridge and then head back there. It looks so beautiful already. Ah! It's believed that the Ritzurin Garden was originally created in the late 16th century from a garden belonging to the Sato clan for the feudal lord. It covers an area of around 40 acres and is the largest cultural property garden in the whole of Japan. Just coming into the garden, all these amazingly sculpted bushes, trees in front, and then this wonderful building. Look at that. Wow. So we're going to go in and have a look. Look at these big, solid, slidey doors. That slide's better than Trudy's door. There's an example of a float here, which they would float on the waters during festivals. I will never get tired of that. Oh my goodness. So you can also get a guide to take you around the park. It's a lovely little bridge. On the one side you've got these giant lily style plants and on the other side you've got normal looking lilies. These pine trees here have a little bit of a special story. One of the pine trees was planted by a former King of England, Edward VIII, when he was a crown prince back in 1922. The water's so clean because there's a natural spring here. You can see the water flowing. Picking the root with the uh, the shade on. Got this little tea house here, thatched roof. It's very, very pretty. This whole uh, cover here by the tea house is wisteria. That would be absolutely stunning when it flowered. And again here, look at this. And there. This is just incredible. Not a bad place to uh, stop and have a drink, is it? Not at all. I've always loved gardens. I'm sure it stems from my childhood. My dad was and is still a keen gardener. And as a child, he used to take us down to his allotment. As an adult, when we lived in a house and not a van, I got a lot of satisfaction growing a colorful and practical garden. And I used to grow as many vegetables as I could. In fact, one year I had a hundred tomato plants. If you know me, I don't eat tomatoes, or not the raw ones, but when they're cooked in dishes, that's another story. In fact, Marianne's mum on her deathbed mumbled, but he doesn't even like tomatoes. To the day she died, she couldn't figure out why I grew so many. But for the record, Marianne loves them. The pathway's just got onto stepping stones. <laughs> Look, I think they think we've got food. 
Look at the size of those. Look at these beauties. Absolutely amazing. With a the view. They've got a nice home at this pond, haven't they? So there's a bridge. You don't want to walk straight on that bridge. Because yeah, like a sobriety test. It's, you've had a beer, it might go wrong. Or if you're looking at the camera while you're vlogging, it might also go wrong. <laughs> Ritsurin literally translates as Chestnut Grove, even though the garden is home to about 1,400 pine trees. Around a thousand of these have been carefully pruned for over 300 years by skilled gardeners, which gives them their bonsai-like appearance. You can see you can obviously go out on a little, like a gondola boat trip, a Japanese boat. It'd be very hot today. This is stunning. I mean, look at this. And here is the bridge, made out of wood. Funny to walk on, but smells, wow. Smells like fresh wood. Oh, what a view from here. Look at that. You cannot get more Japanese than this. Look, there's a cormorant over there drying. It's got its wings open. There's a view from the top of the hill. That's beautiful. So we came in this side of the park and we walked all the way around, all the way around. And we come back here. And now we're heading to the exit because I need to go and cool down. It's nearly midday and the sun is intense, people. Yes. They've got little bonsai trees for sale. You can have your own one. Wow. How much are they? 85,000 yen. They are beautiful. It's about <laughs> four or 500 pounds. Beautiful. And that's taken ages to grow, hasn't it? Look yeah. at that. Can you imagine how many years of care and love went into that? Pay for the parking. There you go. Hold Eight that, my number sweetness. 20. Number 20. Number 20. Yeah, do it. Enter. Why in English? Okay, hold on. Oh, what is it up the top? Enter the lot number and press checkout. I can't Which see. Is what that symbol? Out. It's the blue one. It's the blue one. Oh, yeah. Number 20. Yeah, press the blue. There you go. 500 yen. There you go. It's very hot, but very beautiful. <laughs> We're very happy. <laughs> oh, everybody's so lovely. What an interesting week that was. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And we'll see you next time.